Let's bring in Dan Bongino, host of Unfiltered with Dan Bongino, to comment on this. Dan, the upside-down world of the administration being most un inhumane to illegals is the one claiming to be the most humane. But the numbers don't lie. Yeah, I mean, a couple of things first. Uh, Chris Hayes over at that other network just ran into what Jesse calls, uh, Jesse Waters calls the binder. Uh, she's <laughs> clearly the, I mean, have you ever met someone so unfit for a job? Her title is literally White House spokesperson, and she doesn't want to speak to things. It's like being like the number three hitter on a baseball team going, you know what? I don't feel like stepping in the batter's box. Not my thing. Well, if it's not your thing, then don't play baseball. She never answers a question on anything. <laughs> I mean, at least Saki would answer the question and lie. Okay, we get it. Like, you know, she's very talented at lying. I don't know if that's a compliment or what, but Corinne Jean Pierre is just really genuinely awful at this job. Uh, that, that aside, though, this is a very serious topic, and I'm glad you're covering it this morning. I was very excited when the producers uh, sent this over because this is a, you know, my wife's a legal immigrant to this country. Uh, came here with, with her mother. I, I don't like talking about it all choked up, talking about the story. Rachel's heard. It, Pete's heard it. Uh, Will, you're going to hear it now a little bit. But came here, you know, they came here legally. And my, my, my mother-in-law, man, she, she busted her butt. You know, I, they used to sleep on one mattress in a, in a Jackson Heights apartment. You know, heads, tails, the three, her and her three kids together. And she came over with $10 in her wallet. You know, and, and then she got to meet, uh, she, you know, when, she, when, uh, when I brought her home a, a signed hat from President Trump, she couldn't believe it. She said, you know, Danny, I came here with nothing in my wallet. Now you're bringing me home a hat signed by the President of the United States. <laughs> like, that's what immigration is about. And that's the conservative Republican position. That, gosh, you know, we, we're in, most countries on Earth are in the middle of a demographic time bomb. Read that Wall Street Journal op-ed about China, if you doubt me. No, but there's not going to be anyone around to care for the elderly in China. We need people. But we need people wherever you're from, Mexico, Asia, Africa, wherever you're from, the Caribbean, we need you to come here the right way. Because of what Will just addressed in those, those god-awful statistics. Fentanyl crossing the border, drugs crossing the border, sex trafficking at the border. Uh, and I'll tell you, when I was a Secret Service agent, what people don't know is the same mules who are bringing drugs across the border are bringing counterfeit money. They're bringing weapons. They're bringing all kinds of contraband. These are not the people you want in the United States. You want people who want to be here and be part of this fabric of America. And, and one more point, guys. I'm sorry. I don't mean to hijack this segment, but don't be scared talking about this topic. The liberal media knows exactly why the left is letting this atrocity go on at the border. And you know why? This is about abusing and using migrants for what the left perceives to be political power. They are so afraid of you talking about this. Their, their, let me repeat, their love affair, what they call replacement theory, that if you mention it, mention them talking about it, they accuse you of being a racist for highlighting them talking about it. I, I printed this up. I had my wife print this. This is a New York Times op -ed right here, literally titled, We Can Replace Them, in the New York Times. They are obsessed with this idea of using and abusing migrants for what they call demographic destiny. And if you doubt me one bit, you should. Always fact check. Go online, put in Dick Durbin, Joaquin Castro, demographic destiny, and listen to the way they talk yeah. about these migrants to this country as if they are tools for their political power. It's disgusting. Thanks for telling the truth, Dan. I just think radical it's, truth telling is the only way out of the mess we're in. Thank you. And don't be cowed, it's truly, Rachel. It's they truly. do this all the time. And people get to, oh my gosh, you know, these goofballs at Mediaite or whatever, they said don't talk about it. You know what? I, I flip these people a double barreled middle finger every time. I'm not talking about it. I'm talking about you talking about it. <laughs> yes. And I just backed it up. Just That's go right. look at the New York Times and read it. It's called We Can no, Replace Them. What, what else do you need me to say? Yeah. And meanwhile, they're treating it's the conspiracy. children coming across it's conspiracy. as... conspiracy. Yeah. They're treating the children coming across as assembly lines. Um, just, it's disgusting. It's disgusting. It's disgusting, Rachel. Sorry, and and these are these people, these are human beings, and they deserve far better than this. They don't deserve to be treated like pawns in some big political game for your disgusting, tyrannical political goals. It's gross. And no one's going to lecture me, by the way, about immigration or you, Rachel, either. My wife came here the right way, went through the entire process. You can have a hard pass on lectures from Samuel at Media Matters, smoking a bowl in his mama's basement in between watching porn 
porn sessions. I don't need your lectures <laughs> on what immigration is like. You can plan a big wet one on my rump, okay? I've been through it. You don't know jack squat. Go back to your, you know, 14th century women's studies class on the quad in college and, you know, read about in a book what your buddy told you about. We lived through it. Mm. No, no, Dan. It's it's conspiracy to read someone's words back to them. That's right. that's now conspiracy. <laughs> it's so crazy. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but hey, Dan, you have some new words out. You got a new book. It's on pre-order now. I love the title. You have to tell us about it. The gift of failure. Yeah. Thank you so much. Just briefly, it's available for pre-order wherever you get your books. Uh, I, I said I'd never write a book again. Uh, but I did because I was I was coming out after Rumble went public. It was our first successful parallel economy story with uh, Rumble. It's funny. I was leaving and a whole bunch of people were and liberals, of course, attacking me on Twitter about how, what a loser I was because I lost for office and and all this other stuff. And I thought to myself, guys, we just bought a company public at three billion dollar valuation. If that's losing, I said. Bring on the losing. We love this. This is some great losing. And then I got to thinking. I said, you know, everybody writes books about how great they are and all their successes. 12 Steps, Stan Bongino's wonderful. I said to my wife, I'm not going to write that book. I'm going to write a book about everything I screwed up. It's raw. It's embarrassing at times. But it's stories about the Secret Service things I screwed up, about the NYPD things I screwed up. Uh, it just, it, it really was, a, it's, it's, I'm, I'm really proud of this. I mean, it, it, we are our failures. We're marked more by our failures and what we've done after them than we are by our successes. And I think that's the theme of the book, and I hope everybody likes it. I can't wait to read it. Will, Pete, and I talk a lot about how our own failures have led us to where we're at. So um, it's a gift. It is. It truly is. If you can see it, if for what you it handle is. it right, that's right. If, if you handle it right, precisely. The world is littered with super smart people who are very talented, good looking, and athletic who could never handle failure. Will in the sports space, you could probably tell the hundred stories about this right now. <laughs> All right, Dan, no tell doubt. us what, no doubt. what you have um, on the show tonight. We have uh, an exclusive, finally, like our first great exclusive on Unfiltered with Matt Taibbi about getting attacked up on Capitol Hill. Will had the best tweet ever about that, by the way. Democrats attacking a Democrat journalist about censoring Democrat tweets. <laughs> that was <laughs> awesome. The Taibbi, we have Anna Paulina Luna, Jack Carr, and I have a fiery rebuttal with uh, Jose Aristamuno, a Democrat. It was a good sport, but I pin him down on, hey, what's the fair share? Can you give me a number? You Democrats keep talking about it. How much more do I owe you guys? And he actually, I get him to argue for a tax cut. A Democrat. He doesn't even know it. So it's glorious <laughs> to watch. Check that out. And Pete's on, of course, Great as stuff. well with hot takes. So it's good stuff. Congrats on the book, Dan. It's yeah. awesome. Uh, Thank you, guys. Absolutely. Really appreciate it. And, and thanks Forward to the it. team for letting me uh, promote that. I, I deeply appreciate it. It means a lot. You guys absolutely. are great. The gift of failure. Yeah, I love it. You got to come on my podcast thanks, and promote it the further. Hell yeah. Let's All do right. it. Let's, Let's do uh, it. You're done. All right. Thanks, Dan. All right, see you guys. Never miss Unfiltered. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilney. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.